Good evening, sports centers of Life Whaley alongside JW Cox. We are excited to kick off February with you guys, aren't we, JW? Yeah, before you know it, since it's the shortest month, we're going to be right back into March, right? I mean, this year is just flying yeah. by at this point, but uh, still some fun to get to from January. And in true winter fashion, Blythe, let's kick off the show with some hockey. And we'll do it with two of our teams in high school girls hockey, the Blaine Bengals and the Anoka Spring Lake Park Stormcats. These two teams squaring off at Fogarty Arena, the home ice for both of these two teams. Scoreless early on in the first period. Both teams working the breakaway, and it was Blaine's Shelby Sandberg who would get the first goal from Cameron Singh on the wraparound. A good feed, and then Sandberg with the finish. one nothing on the lead. A scant 18 seconds later, Spring Lake Park, Anoka Spring Lake Park, comes right back on their own break, and it's Mary Fetter takes it from the circle. Top shelf she goes, 1-1 one, one, your score. That's how it would stay through the rest of the first. Into the second period on a three on a five on three power play, rather. Grace Bouch puts the Blaine Bengals up by a goal, two to one. That's how we would go to the third. So this one going to be decided late. Anoka Spring Lake Park on the power play. McKenna Beaver, leave it to her. Katie Booth right off the feed there on the assist. And Beaver scores it to tie the game at two apiece. That was just four minutes into the period. Here with just about seven minutes to go, a shorthanded opportunity. Brielle Fussy takes it away and sends it into the back of the net as the Spring Lake Park Panthers and Blaine Bengals go into a one-goal game and the Bengals would hang on in the final 7-15 to get that victory. 3-2 to two over Anoka Spring Lake Park. Continuing with some more hockey from the ladies, Centennial traveling to take on Anoka Spring Lake Park. And a fun thing about their team is that they have a new coach. There is Dana Rowmaker. Welcome to the North Metro family. But kicking it off here, eyes on Lauren O'Hara to start the goals rolling in here for the Cougars early on. To see her celebrating. But this one, good row, going to come from behind the net with the banger. She gets it in. Cougar is now up 2-0. So we saw one from O'Hara. We saw one from good row. But let's see a combination. Good row to O'Hara. But now, why not a reverse? O'Hara finding good row in this next one. Right in front of the net for the dagger. Gaudreau, left side of your screen. She wants more. She's still hungry. She gets another one. But we've heard Lauren O'Hara's name, but why not another Laura? Laura Parr from the left side of your screen gets it in. Centennial certainly on fire at there tonight. This last one comes from Noel on an assist from Grace Corma. The Cougars win 7-0 to zero over the Panthers. Taking so a look at our standings. Teams there, one ahead, one-on-one -on -one against one another in Centennial and uh, and then Blaine and Spring Lake Park. So the Inoka Spring Lake Park squad looking for that first win. And Blaine and Centennial Blythe right there up in the top of the standings, sitting there tied at 4-1, and one, a battle behind a very good Andover team. Certainly feels good to see our teams having success in the earlies. Now, how about some schedules, some fun upcoming ones here. Blaine going to take on Rogers in a couple days and Andover later on. Centennial taking a look at Osseo Park Center on the 2nd and Blaine on the 9th. How about Anoka Spring Lake Park? We've got uh, February opening up this week with the AC Cooper Wings, the Armstrong Cooper Wings tomorrow, and then Champlin Park, Coon Rapids, the other co-op there for Anoka Spring Lake Park. So it's co-op week for the, uh, the Stormcats there of Anoka Spring Lake Park, and that'll be fun, certainly, to keep an eye on. Everything in full swing in girls hockey. Same can be said for boys hockey. And not the co-op for Spring Lake Park, but a boys team that uh, working their way up to the two-way level. And they had a challenge in Rogers last week uh, to try and knock down as they took the ice against Rogers. 
Well, again, it's always a challenge for the Panthers. They've met that challenge more often than not with better and better results as each passing year has gone by at 2A trying to build this program from the ground up. Rodgers in this game got it started early. Chase Sheslock with the first period goal for the blue clad squad as they're able to take a 1-0 lead. This one at Fogarty, the home ice of the Spring Lake Park Panthers. Rodgers at it again in the first. That's Braden Heyman. Heyman off a two assister from Fredrickson and Struck for the 2-0 lead. Panthers would get on the board next. It's Brock Larson from Ben Wackman with 226 or just 226 into the period. Already the three goals in this game. That would set the tone certainly for the where we would go when it came to the scoring. Still sitting at 2-1. Rogers comes right back three minutes later. Mike and Miller with the score. A 3-1 lead. Panthers though with another answer to get a one goal game. Dylan Sonmore got some more off the feed from Jacob Fritz and it's 3-2 still in this first period so, and now 4-2 as Rodgers had scored again to take that two goal lead but what happens yes the Panthers come back and it's Justin Boyd from Forga and Carson on the two assister again and it's 4-3 scoring though was not done in the period this time unfortunately for Spring Lake Park Tanner Weiss out ahead slides between Beats the tender off the rebound, and Rodgers puts up a five-goal first period. Panthers score three, so we've got plenty of action the rest of the way, but it would all be Rodgers 14-4, the final there. Boys hockey standings out of that. Anoka Spring Lake Park, the one win. Blaine sitting at three and two, and Centennial at four, one, and one. So far, it's Andover and that Rodgers team. They're five, one, and oh setting the pace right now in the Northwest Suburban Conference flies as we take a look at what our teams have upcoming. Yeah, the Blaine team will get to take on Tatino Grace. They'll have to travel on the road, but get to have that home one against Maple Grove on the 6th. Centennial taking a look at Andover. Again, also another team on the road, but they'll get to take on Blaine there on the 11th. So that will be a nice home one for them. Bring us home with Spring Lake Park, JW. You've got Champlin Park up next for the Spring Lake Park Panthers, and then they'll be at Elk River Zimmerman to open up a, a two-game stretch on the road that'll take them into next week when they travel to Totino Grace. What about basketball, Blythe? Busy, busy schedule in the winter from the ice into the gym, and certainly some fun had last week for our team. Yeah, absolutely. I love when the hoops are rolling for our teams, and we had a lot of great action here, but our first one is going to kick us off. Elk River traveling to the Spring Lake Park Panthers. Get to see Elk River preparing, and the Panthers excited to hunker down in their home court, but in Guinea, high-low action there to Diaz, and she gets the bucket early on this one coming from Langbane over to Ella Johnson for the tray both teams open it up nice but slicing and dicing is Cameron Smith with the two the Elks continue their run as well Langbane slippery like a snake finds her way to the bucket the Elks, aggressive there on defense, get the ball thrown up to Barr to finish it out on that fast break. The Elks, able to drive his mass, finding her way just like a bullet straight down the lane. Kicking it out, trying to make something happen, but Ingenia finding her way to cash in because the bank is open. However, the Elks coming the other way is Kayla Christie to make them pay. Right here, the Panthers able to get their own rebound, putting it back as Klo Beck, that second chance opportunity, but finishing it out. Here will be Kayla Christie as the Elks beat the Spring Lake Park Panthers 70 to 46. Taking a look at the standings, getting to see Centennial having great success already in the season's opening games. They're sitting 5-0 overall in those three conference wins. Blaine, 1-2 in conference, but 3-2 overall. 
And then on the west side, Spring Lake Park, one and one, and overall two and three. The girls' basketball schedules as we move through Blaine Centennial and Spring Lake Park. You take a look at this week's Centennial and Champlain Parks. We've got another girls' basketball showdown between our two teams in Blaine and Centennial. That rivalry going on. Centennial will also take on Centennial Grace. Meanwhile, Spring Lake Park will be taking on Osseo and Park Center this week. Blythe, what about standings on the boys' side? On the boys' side, we're looking at Blaine sitting two and one in overall two and three, and Centennial one and two overall one and four, but still have quite a few games to get some more wins. And Spring Lake Park on the west side two and zero in the conference, so that feels really good for them overall four and one. And this week on the boys' side, also that matchup, Spring Lake Park, or excuse me, Blaine will be hosting Centennial in that one while Spring Lake Park takes on Maple Grove. They'll travel to Osseo, while Centennial's second game is to Tino Grace, and Blaine will take on Champlain Park. Well, that does it for these, uh, the sports where you don't dive in, I guess, right? You're not going to dive in in hockey. You're not going to dive in in basketball. But you know where you dive, life. You dive and swim and dive. And we've had, absolutely, right? It's right in the name. We've had plenty of that, starting with uh, Centennial, a tough Northwest Suburban Conference meet against the Maple Grove Crimson. Maybe one of the top teams in the Northwest Suburban Conference by the time all is said and done this year. And they showed it at Centennial, getting out to a real quick start here in this one. It was a one and two start for Centennial so far on the Northwest Suburban Conference season. But again, they jumped up a level as they saw Maple Grove take the top spot in the first nine events in this boys swim and dive meet, including a lightning quick 200 medley relay of 145.59. Zachary Hopp with a 200 freestyle relay with a 153.09. Langston Fillion with a 212.73 took home the 200 individual medley. Then it was Jackson Brown in the 50 with a time of 22.69. We took a pause for the diving where Riley McNamara has been the leader for Centennial in that category this year. And he was again, he took the top spot giving Centennial their first points of the night with a final aggregate score of 228.95. Then to the 100 butterfly. And that's when the records started falling. Jackson Brown set a pool record 53.74 in the 100 fly finishing up with a strong run there. Jalen Liu kept it going for Maple Grove in the 100-yard freestyle with a time of 49.54. Zachary Hopp won again in the 500 free with a time of 5.19.39. 200 free, Maple Grove got that relay as well. And as a part of that, there was a great run by Dylan Baltus in that to pick up a record for the pool in the 50 leg of that with a time of 22 29. Finally, the Cougars did get a couple of wins late as George Atkinson would win the 100-yard backstroke for the Cougars. The 100-yard breaststroke also goes to the Cougars and Max Shire as uh, the Cougars were able to get a couple of good wins on the board. But again, that early push for, for Maple Grove gave them the win, the final again of 97 to 80. Four. We stay in the pool as the Bengals take on Coon Rapids. The 200 medley relay, this one won by Coon Rapids A team in a time of 140.03. The 200 yard freestyle, this is Schultz all alone. 151.75, he hits the wall. The 200 yard individual medley is up next. Keep your eyes on lane five. It's Iran of Coon Rapids, and he is running away with this one, figuratively, of course. 206 56. 50 yard freestyle. This quick one is where Blaine gets their first victory of the night. Anderson hit the wall in 24 43 over. Coon Rapids Larson. We head to the diving well. Timmy Rotter back dive straight comes up all smiles because he knows this was a tremendous dive. Now it's Tyler Grizziak, the back somersault tuck. He does a wonderful job entering the water for his team as well. We head back to the pool, the 100 yard butterfly. Lane five, Melsha hits the wall for Coon Rapids, 54 81. Blaine coming in second and third in this race as well. 
the 100 yard freestyle is on dock. We see Maya Ja in this close one. Boone Rapids gonna hit the wall 52 67, but Blaine's Mackey was 52 85. Our last one for you, 200-yard freestyle relay. Coon Rapids hit the wall first in 136.09 over the Blaine's A relay team. Coon Rapids gets the final overall victory of 101 over the Bengals, 81. And over to the boys' swimming schedules, where they're going next. Blaine going to take on Armstrong on the road, and Elk River will follow that. Centennial taking on Andover at home and then head on the road to uh, match up against Osseo. And how about Spring Lake Park? Spring Lake Park, they will be at Armstrong and Coon Rapids at home. So those will be some fun matchups uh, for them. The great pool facility there at Spring Lake Park going to be busy down the stretch with four of their final five at home. All right. That, leave us, that leaves us with one more highlight here for the week, and that takes us to the mat. A little bit of wrestling between Centennial and Maple Grove. They're the headliners in Northwest Suburban Conference Tribe, but it also involves Umbrota Mazeppa, Chase Steffen, the new head coach for Centennial, facing off against his dad who coaches Umbrota Mazeppa, Link Steffen down there, so certainly fun to see. Zimbrota Mazeppa opens up with a couple of wins. Jack Creer with a pin at 106. Ryan Stimitz with a pin at 113. Centennial would get their first win of this leg of the try at 120 when Luke Timko would get a decision to get that those points on the board for Centennial against a very, very tough Zimbrota Mazeppa program. It's one of those schools that perennially right there at the state tournament. Couple of pins at 126 and 132 takes us to 138 where Mason Goodman for Zimbrota Mazeppa gets the pin. But the Cougars were back on the scoreboard at 152 as Jonah Hilton would come out with a 13-8 decision over Kyle Cloutier for Zimbrota Mazeppa to make it 36-6 at that point in favor of Zimbrota Mazeppa. At 195, Gabe Tupper would get the pin over Cameron Bettinger. And then 220, Ethan Kovars of Zumbrota Mazeppa would pin Oscar Welch of the Cougars in the final match with no heavyweight division there. 66 to 12 was the final bout there in the final tally, 66 12. But they still had Maple Grove on the schedule in the Northwest Suburban Conference portion of that try. And at 106, Andrew Person came out for Centennial and pinned Evan Kilgard. Got him out to a six nothing start. Maple Grove would come back at 138 and get a tech ball with uh, Malachi Thennis to even uh, to put things at 20 to 10 after the 138 bout at 145 Sam Petrzewski with a decision over Charlie Richards that put the Cougars back within seven Tyler Cook at 160 would take uh, the tech fall win over Jacob Warbeneck at 160 and that pushed the Cougars into the lead at that point at 24 to 20 at 170 Marcus Whiting kept the good thing going with the pin of Draven Draven Cradoin excuse me Made it 30 to 20 in favor of Centennial. When the hand slapped the mat and then pushed us to 170 where Marcus Whiting, now we've got that pin, excuse me, the Owen Hackett pin came at 182 over Joe Straff and then 195. Cougars get another pin. Joe Straff over Zach Nash. Cougars push past the threshold needed there and then at the heavyweight division, Joe Streff defeats Zeth Petri and sets the final tally at 51 to 20. There's your heavyweight bout and a big takedown for Streff to get it done for the Centennial Cougars. Drop the first end of the try, but come back and beat Maple Grove 51 to 20 to salvage the victory that night. Wrestling schedules for Blaine. Well, they'll get started later this week. They'll take on Rogers in a try. Why is that a two days later on a Saturday morning? Centennial is at Park Center and then Moundsview on Saturday. And it will be at Park Center as the as the, uh, the other portion of that try for Irondale SLP. And they'll be at Orono on Saturday. Plenty of wrestling action Saturday, Blythe. But of course, the big action that everyone will be keeping an eye on will be Sunday. And I know you've brought some thoughts for uh, for your Super Bowl prediction. What do you, what do you got? Who, who are you thinking, Chiefs or uh, going with the Buccaneers? 
Yeah, of course. I mean, in any Super Bowl, you sometimes want to root for the underdog. And so I'm excited to think about this game as sure, you know, Tom Brady has won so many, but his coach hasn't. So rooting for the underdog, want to see his coach get that Super Bowl ring coming up here. How about you, JW? Funny. Yeah, funny how soon the narrative can change because that was what they were saying about Andy Reid last year. So he got his. So now we need to move on to Bruce Arians. I'll go for the Chiefs. We'll keep it interesting. And we'll go, uh, you, you take the Buccaneers, I'll take the Chiefs. And we'll see how it shakes out after Sunday. We've got plenty of more coverage coming up throughout this week and also uh, next week as well to look ahead. Go to NorthMetroTV.com to see all that. Of course, we've got our matchup with our basketball teams that will still be underway this week. Blaine and Centennial on both the boys and girls side. So you can catch those on the channel. And boys swim and dive. Andover and Centennial will be back at the pool again on Thursday. Tatino Grace and Centennial on Friday as well. All of that can be subject to change. Go to NorthMetroTV.com for all the details to see where you can catch those games. And as always, Blythe, have people go out and support their team. Go Bengals. Go Cougars. And go Panthers. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you.